In this video, we're going to go over the basics of creating a form in your Milo site. Forms can be used to collect content or to have a way for people to email you directly from the site. So I'm logged in as the webmaster of the Demo Local League, this league right here, and I know that I'm logged in because I have the My Account and Logout links here. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to my Administer League menu, and in here, one of my options is Add Form. So I'll click on that, and now this looks pretty much just like any page on my site. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create whatever introduction I want or title. This is a demo form. And then I'll give it a description. I can format it. If I want to use embed code, I can do that here. If I want to put you know, a, a PayPal button or something in here, I can certainly do that here. And then I'm going to decide whether or not this form is available to the public or only to members. Right now I'll leave it as public. And then I can go ahead and save this form. I'm going to save it directly to published for purposes of this demonstration. Okay, so now I have a piece of content that is intended to be a form. As you can see, however, when looking at this, there are no form elements. There's no form to fill out just yet. What I want you to notice is that when you're looking at this piece of content here, this is a demo form, which I created as a web form. Up here in my tabs at the top where I have view published, new draft, moderate, I also have now web form and results. You won't see these two tabs on non-form content. So let's go to another piece of content here, which is an action alert. You'll see that you just have view published, new draft, and moderate. So when you want to start adding form elements and behaviors to your form, you're going to need to make use of web form and results. Web form being where you'll configure the form itself, and then results being where you'll actually see any submissions that have been that have been submitted to your form. So we'll start by going to web form. Now that I've clicked on this, the first thing that I have is a place where I can start adding components to my form. Components are your fields, which can be select options, an email form, uh, an email field, a text area where people can type whatever they want. So let's do a couple of standard items here. Uh, we want to know the person's email address. right? So we'll choose email as the type of component, and we'll make this required. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a couple here. Now, email address is a special one because as an email address, you can actually find out if the user has an email address that the browser knows about. And if they do, then it can grab that as the default. You can give them some help text if you want. Um, you know, we won't sell your address, for example. And then you can also indicate whether or not this is a required field. There are other settings that you can do here, and you can play with those on your own. I'm just going to try to go through some of the most important items here. So now we've added a component to our form. We've added email address. And I'm just going to click on View Published here so that I have two tabs open. I right clicked on that, so now I have the demo form here. And then I have the form where I can actually see what the user is going to see. Notice it's grabbing my email address by default here, which is great. And that is the only field that's here right now. So that's all that I see. So now I'll go back to my components and maybe I'll add a text area. We'll call this message. We're going to choose text area because we want people to be able to write long messages. And then I'll make it required. There's no point in having them submit a, a form if they don't actually put a message in there in this case, right? Depends on what you need. A lot of different options here, but you can play with those on your own. 
Now I'm going to go back to the view and reload. And now we see the message field right here where somebody can write long text. A couple of other options that I have that are going to be very important to you. A standard text field, one line, is very important. So uh, maybe your name would be something that could be in a standard text field. So I'll choose that. And then I'm going to add this one. I'm going to make it required and I'm going to add it. I won't change anything here. I'll save this component. And then if we reload this, it is a little bit odd in terms of the order, the flow of the form to have the name at the end. Usually that's probably something to have at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and move it up to the beginning here. There's these little grabby handles that I can click on to drag things around. And then I'll go ahead and save that. Okay. Now one thing to notice is that my new component field here has popped in right under wherever it was that I was last working. So that's something to be aware of as you're working on your form components. Now there's something else that I want to create here. I've created a text field, I've created an email address field, and I've created a message field. Another type of field that you're going to do fairly often is going to be some kind of a select list. This could be some checkboxes, or it could be a, uh, a select list to determine who the form is going to email. And let me give you a couple of demonstrations of that. So um, first I'll do check checkboxes. This might be preferences. Now I'm going to do checkboxes in a cheating way right now. I'm going to go ahead and go to another form on the system. <coughs> So I'm just going to go to South Dakota to this donate form here and I'm going to grab the, um, oh, I grabbed, I link, clicked on the wrong field here. So I'm going to go back. Um, I clicked on the new draft. What I actually want to do is look at the web form here and I'm going to go ahead and grab the information under those checkboxes. So it's preferences here. I'm going to click select and I'm just going to copy this. Now I'm doing this for the sake of ease of demonstration and I'll explain what I'm doing. So I'll call this preferences. I'm going to make this select options and it's not required. These are optional items that somebody might fill out. I'm going to click add and I'm going to scroll down and in here I'm going to paste what I just copied. Now I want to look with you closely at what I just pasted. So there's some nice help text here underneath this field. And then right here you'll see that I have kind of an interesting layout here. The first line has anonymous and then there's this pipe here. And then it says I wish my contribution to remain, remain anonymous. This is the machine key for this option. If the user checks it, this is what the machine knows that the user has checked. This right here is what the user sees because anonymous won't mean anything to them. It's very important that what the machine sees doesn't have spaces or characters or anything like that in it. What the user sees can be however you want it to be. Let's look at the next line where this becomes even more clear. Tax deductible. And then there's this pipe. This pipe should be right under your delete key. You'll need to hold the shift key and then there's a, a key right under it that has a slash and a pipe on it. And then there's text here that says, I wish my contribution to, to be tax deductible where allowed by law. There's a period in there that's a special character. Um, and then the check will be made out to, and then who it's going to be made out to. There's some quotes here. Um, I'm going to change South Dakota because that's not what I actually want here. And then I have parentheses in here. So these special characters could get me in a lot of trouble if they're in the key, the machine key here. But they're really helpful to the user in terms of identifying what it is that they're checking on.
The other thing that I want to say here is I want users to be able to choose multiple items here. There's three items and I want them to be able to choose more than one. Maybe they want it to be anonymous and they want it to be tax deductible. So I'm going to allow them to choose more than one. I'll check off multiple here, which says, okay, you can choose more than one value. You can also allow the user to add something else if they want to. Now from here, I'll save this component and we'll take a look at what this actually looks like on the page. <clears throat> so here we go. We have our preferences and I'll let you play around with the formatting here. I'm just giving you kind of a basic introduction. So the user can check off multiple items if they'd like to. They can add an other item if they'd like to. And this is all set up right here. Now another thing that you might really want to do is you might want to be able to have a select list that allows the user to choose who the form is going to email without you showing off email addresses. So I'm going to go back to my components here and let's add another item here. Let's call this subject. And then in this case, I'll leave it as select options. This is required. And I'll add this. Now under options, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, okay, member services, uh, maybe member ser member services um, and then maybe I'll also say action and redistricting committee right so these are a couple of choices you'll see here the difference between what the user gets to see and what the machine sees and then the pipe in between. So here's three options. Now in this case, I only want the user to choose one because this is going to determine who this particular, uh, who this particular, this particular selection is going to determine who receives this email. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a list box so that the user has a list that they're going to choose from as opposed to having the check boxes or radio buttons. And now I'll go ahead and save this. And then we'll reload this. And I'll scroll down here and now we have under subject a select list where I get to choose which option for who receives this particular email. Nothing has been set up yet for a recipient. This is just what the user sees and how the user experiences the form. Okay, so now I'm happy with my form. It's what I need it to be. Um, maybe I want to add a message underneath here saying thank you for your time. So I'm going to go back to editing the page itself. And I'm going to scroll down here. I want to show you, just like on your other pages, there's this add third party embed code and add additional formatted text underneath your main body. But then this is actually duplicated because there's another section here that says content below form. So if I use one of these two buttons, I can add stuff underneath the form itself. So in this case, I'll choose add additional formatted text. I'll say thank you for your time. I can style it however I want. Let's uh, center that. And now I can go ahead and save. I'm going to take this directly to published. And then I'll scroll down so that you can see this. And there it is text that's underneath the form itself. Okay, so now we've set up the user experience for the user, but we also need to be concerned with the behavior of the form for you as you are receiving the content that's being submitted. This is where results come in, which will hold anything that is submitted. 
So if I fill out this form, um, I'll set my contribution to be anonymous. It's taking an email address, which is great. Um, this isn't going to do anything yet because I haven't configured it, but we're just going to set all this. We're going to fill all this out so that you can see what's going on here. And then I'll go ahead and submit the form. Okay, so it gives me a little message saying my submission has been received. That's all well and good, but I might want to do something else and I can go back to the form if I want to. As an administrator, I can now go to results and I can take a look at the submission. So here's the submission right here. It tells me when the submission came in and who it came from. And then I can view the submission if I want to. And I can also navigate, if there was more than one submission, I can navigate between submissions. <clears throat> I might also, however, want to take a look at all of the submissions in table format with whatever content has been put in there. So this is a useful way for you to see what's here and then if you want to, to clear data after you have made sure that you've gotten it in some other form. But the other thing that I need to be able to do is I need to be able to adjust the way that the form behaves. So we saw that default confirmation message. Um, we've also seen we also know that we want to make sure that when the user makes a selection, uh, whether they're sending to the redistricting committee or to member services, we want to make sure that it goes to the right recipient if it emails out. Right now, all that's happening is when the user fills out the form, those results are stored in the results table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to emails here. And I'm going to make sure that when somebody submits this message that it emails the right person. So right here, I can have it send to a specific address if I want to, and then start adding this. Or I can have it choose from a component value, so whatever was filled out in the form. And in this case, it's the subject field that I'm interested in because that's the one where they choose what category they're talking about and that's how I determine where this email gets sent. So now I'll choose add and because this is a select list it's going to ask me who should be emailed when the user makes one of these selections. And so I'll just go ahead and put in some addresses. And you get the point. Okay, so I've put in some email addresses to receive these emails. Now I can also have some other information go in. Um, okay, this is a good default subject here. It tells me when I receive this message, I'll know where it came from, which is good. The email form address, you probably don't actually want it to, or the email from address, you probably don't want the site email address to be what that from email is. You probably want it to be the person filling out the form, their email address, so that when you reply, you're replying directly to that person. And then the name, you probably actually want to choose whatever they put into the your name field. From here, you can then also decide what you're going to see in that email. The really important thing is not to lose this particular token here. So you're probably not really going to edit this very much, but you can edit it if you want to. And then from there, you'll save your settings. So now if the user fills out this form, then an email will be sent to the recipient that's determined by the subject that they chose when they filled out the form. Another piece of this that I might want to customize is under form settings. I might want a much nicer confirmation message than the one that we received by default. If you remember when I filled out the form, it then just said, thank you for your submission or your form has been submitted or something like that. But I might actually want to I might want to write all kinds of information here. I might want to ask them to 
follow up with something. I might want to put a link here to another form. Maybe you have an interest survey and you want a link to that. Um, maybe you want to include a, a PayPal button, for example. Um, you can change this to full HTML and start adding HTML code if you have embed code for PayPal buttons where they can go and actually donate directly. And you can also determine that you want to send your user somewhere else. Maybe you've made a custom page on your site that you want to send people to when they, uh, when they actually submit their form, rather than just having the default page that the site itself generates. Or maybe you just want to reload the form page itself with a message up at the top. And that's entirely up to you. There's other things here that you can play with, but the other one that I really want to show you is down here at the bottom under advanced settings you can change the label that the user sees at the bottom of the form so let's go back to the form itself here so that we can see it and i'll scroll down and it says submit right here maybe this is a donate form or a join form so instead of submit maybe you want it to say join now And then you can save this configuration. And if I reload this, now that message has changed down here at the bottom. And if I fill this out again, we'll just uh, put in a few things here. Subject, I will choose, this is gonna hopefully not email to somebody here. I'll change this address just to see Okay, I'm going to leave that alone and then we'll put this in. This is a test. And a test email. Okay, so um, now I'm going to go ahead and send this and what's going to happen you'll see that the message has changed to what i put into that box and that all of that information will now be in my results table so there's a new submission i can view the first submission and then i can go to next submission and view the next submission so this is all very useful or i can look at that table and I can also know that an email was sent to the appropriate recipient when I submitted this form. There are a lot of other things that you can do with forms. You can put them into menus, just like any other content. You can make them members only forms, just like any other content. And you can really get creative with your forms, but beyond what I already showed you, I don't recommend that you do too much without experimenting a lot, saving drafts, and seeing what happens. Because forms can be incredibly complex, and I could easily do a two-hour video for you that shows you all of the things that you could do. If you are a more advanced user and more curious and you want to try things out, I do want to point out that there is a conditionals tab right here. Again, this is for advanced users. But this allows you to set up conditions upon which users are going to be presented with specific material in their form. So this just gives you an idea of how sophisticated you can get. Going back to form components, I also want to show you that I only went through a couple different types of fields, but there are a lot of other fields here that you could set up. So there's a lot that you can do, a lot that you can play with. And it's very important that you test these things out before trying them on your live form because the options are can be pretty advanced. And that is how you will play with forms on your site.